Hello and welcome back to the channel, it's Mark from PowerSonic and Apprentice One to One. If you want to see how to form a bend in some teal's trunking, I'm going to take you through it in this video from start to finish. I'm not going to edit out all of the rough bits and stuff that I might have got wrong. When you are manufacturing bends, they won't all be perfection. This is the first one I have done in a long while. Obviously we're blessed with manufacturer fittings these days and many sites will only accept those in the spec but I think it's a skill that's much needed and can get you out of trouble from time to time, especially in the times of COVID when getting hold of those steel free manufactured fittings wasn't quite so simple. Let's dive into it and see how we came up with this. Let's make a cut in some steel trunking. This is 75 by 75 mil trunking. I am using my client tool square and it is an imperial. So we're going for inches, it's three inch trunking and you need to mark from your center line three inches in either direction for your two outer lines. So you can see here I've got the line in the center, which is gonna be the center of my um, angle. And then I'm making these two outer marks here at the same distance of the, the trunking again, away from that center line. Now on this center line here, I'm gonna to have to mark all the way around the trunking. So I've just popped a little mark on the outer lip. So when we get to the other side, we can check that that lines up. So we're just taking the center line all the way around. I'm going to spend a bit of time on the video talking about this because it is the marking out that really does um, set the quality of your bend. And I am using a blue pen so it shows up on camera. Usually you would go for something like a scribe so you get a really nice, neat, sharp, straight line. Doesn't show up on camera very good though. So you can see we've got our line all the way across and this is where I need to transfer that mark to the front lip. And then I make my 45 degree marks off that to put a little cut in that lip so when the angle's formed we get a nice neat join and that'll make more sense as we move further through this video when you see the join coming together. So that's kind of all the marks we need to make and now we can start making some of the cuts along those lines and see if we can get this to look okay at the end. I'm using a jigsaw for all these cuts and I'm just taking out that little triangle on the lip that I was just speaking about there. You can use an angle grinder, you can use a chop saw, you can use a hand saw Whatever you wish, I just find the jigsaw simplest, quickest, easiest, easiest, and safest as well. I think you've just got to be careful when you're approaching the edge here, because if the saw was to grab the back of the trunk in, it would spit itself about a little bit. So you can see the wider stance here, and I have got my head camera on, because I'm doing some YouTube footage, and I want to try and get some cool editing and close-ups on the blade. But I think looking at that, I got the angle on the camera a bit wrong. So you can see here we're making that final cut there across the trunk in and we can get on to doing a little bit of filing at this stage and remove some of the metal that we've cut. So on this one we want to file the back edge of the trunking and this is so we can snap that away to give a nice clean cut. In hindsight I didn't really file that for quite long enough and it's not come off as easily as it could have done but the result is still acceptable, nice neat sharp line. There's going to be lots of filing along this, whatever method you use to make your cuts you will be left with sharp edges and you need to smooth and debare them. And even on the edges and angles of some of the bits of metal that are left, file them to a flat or rounded angle. It's gonna help when you form the shape in the trunking and also stops it from snagging any cables. Here I'm just cutting the front lip off of the trunking. And again, this is a tricky one with a jigsaw. It does take a bit of practice. It's easy to snag up and get wrong. And then again, cutting along the back edge here. And this is the one that's the hardest with a jigsaw because you can't get really tight into the back there and you don't want to leave too much of a lip on. So when you come to form this into the 90, that can kind of impede the angle a little bit. We've now got that set so we can pop it over and see how square we are and if everything kind of lines up with where it needs to be. And first time out, it wasn't a bad result. You're never going to get a perfect bend on every single manufactured bend you make. And it's just a case of trying to do your best. We don't always have time allowed on site for perfection. So here you can see I'm just popping some holes in the back edge first so I can secure that with some rivets. You can use nuts and bolts if you wish, but in this case I'm going for the rivets. They give a smoother finish internal to the trunking and external to be fair and allow for a neater profile off and on the wall. So we can see I've got the holes through there. I think that was a 5mm hole. I'm using 5mm rivets here, so a reasonable size. And the, um, the tool for popping the rivets is a lot easier than the whole hand pump method. And that's going to lock that in place. So I'll be able to let go after getting the first one in. Pop this second one in and secure that up uh, nice and tight. I always do the back one first because it holds it uh, rigid while you come to do the slightly more flappy bit on the inside. You can if you want use clamps on that. Um, I tend to, to bend it and form it into shape and just, just drill through. But 
if it is a bit too wappy, you can clamp it. As you can see here again, just popping that last rivet in, and that's that all nicked together nice and strong. Not a bad effort. You can see we've got our rivets in there, front and back. It is square, which is the most important thing. No sharp edges. We've got a nice, neat join, if you see on that, on our corners. So when your lid goes on, that's going to look the business. No waste, no scrap, nice simple cut. Obviously you can use your manufactured joins, but who wouldn't like a bit of fun from time to time? So I hope you found that a useful video. I've tried to pop as much content in as alongside this as I can. Obviously you need to make sure that your edges are all safe, that you are not exposing any cables to snags and stuff. When we're using those rivets in there, you've got to make sure your ends are smooth. Usually they bend them over into like a little mushroom and there's no sharp edges there. But it's positioning your fixing holes in a way the cables won't be lying on them as well and that you've got that rigidity and strength. This is absolutely rock solid. If you've got any questions or any tips how you go about tackling this particular problem, please do drop them in below. Not so much a problem, but how you do it. Um, and any other wider questions, as always, get involved in the comments. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll be back again with some more content soon.